Julia sí ya sabe. Hello and to welcome to ZimDI TV. We are streaming live from the capital city of Harare. Please note we are also streaming on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, ZimDI TV News. Your host, I am Robert uh, Tafumane. Today in the studio, we have one of the politicians to announce that she is going to run as an independent uh, candidate in uh, 2018 and for some they were caught by surprise for some they expected it but for some well they didn't take it lightly this is what she wrote for too long we have allowed those who look at our residents as a mere vote and a seat in parliament to take advantage of us. Zimbabwe has suffered the devastating of misrule under a government that refuses to be answerable to its citizens. We have allowed there to be a government of the young without the young. You have guessed right. She is an aspiring candidate for Mount Pleasant, Fadzai Mayer. How are you? I'm fine, thank you, Robert. How are thank you, you for welcome. coming to Zim Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for having me and warm welcome to all your viewers. There are more than 200 seats. Sorry? Yes. Why Mount Pleasant? Well, Mount Pleasant is the constituency that I've got the strongest connection to. <laughs> I think sometimes the difficulty with parliamentarians is that they try and represent people where they don't live. Yeah, which is, which is very common in, in Zimbabwe. Yeah, it's very common, with yeah. the result that they become remote control MPs. Um, you know, I, I don't favor that approach. I'd rather be where I am and represent the people who I, I live among. And it's a, it's a constituency with which I've got, you know, other connections as well. I mm -hmm. went to school there. I teach there. It's a, it's a constituency that I'm, I'm fairly, fairly familiar with. So as a resident of Mount Pleasant, have you ever met your MP or by any chance do you know who your MP is? Well, I now know. <laughs> okay. Robert, I yeah. now know who my member of parliament is mm -hmm. um, as a result of running for this seat. Mm -hmm. But prior to my decision to run um, for, for, for MP, I, I didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, be the change. That's your slogan. That's your motto. Yes, that's our tagline. The motivation behind. What well, is it? I think, you know, for too long, we have been sitting on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, you, you will have noticed that over the last year, you know, I was involved with the citizens movement, which mm -hmm. involved a lot of interface with politicians mm -hmm. and public officials, you know, speaking, asking, speaking, acting. We've got all sorts of, you know, public authorities, you know, <laughs> on our program, sitting with us. We did town halls, we did debates, we did okay. all sorts of things. And what we found more and more is that what we were saying was falling on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. And so we decided that, look, instead of trying to, you know, shout from the sidelines, telling people what sort of change you want and it falling on deaf ears, it's mm -hmm. important sometimes to step into the fray and be the change you wish to see in the community and do the things and be an exemplar of what you want your constituency to look like, what you believe representation should feel like, and what you think, mm -hmm. um, you know, being a voice for the people, what, you know, development is, what accountability is, etc. So that's the motivation behind our tagline, Be the Change. Kodesting uh, is an independent okay. candidate, could you? That's brave to me, and Ray in Zimbabwe. We have seen maybe from 1980, if we count our fingers, there might be less than five. And you say, this is what I want to do. Why did you not join any political party? Well, I think, contest? first of all, that there are more than five that have tried to contest okay. this independence. Mm -hmm. But I think the question still stands. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, an, an independent? I think, you know, my personal frustration so far with the politics is that, you know, despite the declining quality of life in Zimbabwe, the issues, the daily struggles that Zimbabweans face have not been brought into the mainstream by our traditional political parties. And so my decision to run as an independent was inspired um, by the idea that, look, we want to make issues mainstream. We want to actually hear from the people. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to go to them with a slogan 
um, without actually giving them a voice, hearing it, and then being able to articulate it, you know, ahead of any sort of, you know, political party machinations. So that's what's inspired my candidacy. And, you know, mind you, Robert, the fact that something hasn't been done often is yeah, not that's, a reason not to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine if yeah. in 2000, the uh, MDC had said, ah, oh, you know, most opposition parties don't traditionally do well. We wouldn't be here today. Be, yes. So it's always about, you know, trying to do something new. <laughs> Let's look at your manifesto, which uh, I understand it has been all over in the media or also in the... Oh, by the way, you've taken so much on the social media. What are the advantages of using social media in your campaign? Well, our media strategy is actually wider than mm -hmm. just social media. I'm sure okay. you've seen a lot of yes. print media, mm -hmm. just, you know, the articles, the interviews, and mm -hmm. also our manifesto has come out in mm -hmm. print media. But what we find with social media is that it does target um, a segment of the population very efficiently, the young, mm -hmm. um, and those who are on, almost everyone is on WhatsApp now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the advantage... First of all, is that you get feedback almost instantly, feedback okay. that you can hear. So people yeah. will tell you what they think about your manifesto. People will give their input almost straight away. And also, I think uh, one cannot discount the efficiency of social media and getting the word out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people are often checking their WhatsApp, checking their Facebook, especially for the constituency which we wish to, to represent. Social media and internet penetration are, are fairly high in this constituency. But, you know, we've... We've done other things as well. We've got hard copies and so on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are the advantages. I would say you are a young female politician. I'm also young. I'm a young voter. Okay. <laughs> yes. There's this notion that our generation don't vote. Where do you expect to earn more of your votes within your constituents? Robert, that's a great question. And I think the starting point is to ask why. Mm -hmm. Why don't people like you and I vote? And, you know, a lot of young people... Are yeah, I, no, I, I vote. I vote. Yes. But a lot of people that are around you, you'll mm -hmm. probably find that they don't vote. And a lot of the time they mm -hmm. say, look, there's no point, or, you know, they can't make the connection between their vote and a better life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's because the politicians don't make an issue of what their daily struggle is. Mm -hmm. So if I'm unemployed and you tell me to go and vote... I'll be like, well, how's that going to change my yeah, life? I may as well, yeah. you know, go out onto the street and do what I need to do in order to survive. <laughs> so I think what's what's very important with young people is to communicate a message that they understand and that they can relate to. And there is, you know, an unmobilized section of our society. Mm -hmm. And you're very right in pointing out that they, they, they don't vote. It's important for us to now make the connection with them. And I think that's what our campaign is doing and aims to do and to also give people the information information is power a lot of the time True. people don't vote because they don't know where to vote they, they okay. hear all these fancy terms like bvr like proof of residence and they don't know <laughs> what it means so it's up to the politicians uh -huh. it's up to the voter educators to go to the young people in messages and languages and through media mm -hmm. that they understand and explain the importance of their vote and i'm sure once we do that we then you know are able to mobilize the young and also people who are deeper depoliticized a lot of people are now tired of politics in zimbabwe they believe that look it won't change anything they believe it's violence so it's important to attach to our politics a message of hope and a message of inspiration mm -hmm. we are streaming live uh, on zimdi tv like our facebook page and also share if you have any questions Fadzai Mahere is there. She also wrote, every voice must be heard and every question must be answered. We also believe in that at ZimDI TV, every voice must be heard and we will give you that platform. Every question must be answered. She is here in the studio. If you have any questions for Fadzai, send it via our comments platform and she will answer that question. <clears throat> You manifest what will be the first thing that you do um, if you are elected? Thank you very much, um, Robert. That's a great question. I'm sure you've already seen the manifesto it's centered around mm -hmm. hope, accountability, and development. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing that I'll do <clears throat> um, if elected into office is to bring all the various sections of our constituency together. Um, you'll note that Mount Pleasant is a very diverse and beautiful constituency. You've yes. got big business, you've got students, you've got um, 
business, small to medium business, you've got residents, you've mm. got a wide array of people, and you find that the problems that we face as a constituency are problems that if you brought the various sections of these constituents um, of, of, of the constituency together could easily could easily be solved. So the most important thing would be to start setting up um, all the things that we've spoken about, mm -hmm. you know, the big business roundtable we've talked about, and some of these things we're already implementing, um, the small business training for our low-income residents of Mount Pleasant. You know, we've set up, um, you know, a coding uh partnership with you know one of one of our constituency community leaders we want to get that on the ground as of yesterday um we want to get started with you know educating and ensuring that every single resident has at least an o-level certificate we want to get cracking on you know ensuring that there's a maternity clinic at bond street clinic um you know these are some of the big projects that we we'd like to you know hit the ground hmm. running with there you are a residence in the constituents of Mount a pleasant. Um, some say for one to get into politics, you need to have cash. You need to have money. I'm not sure either for vote buying. I'm not sure even for for buying other in other means. How are you funding your campaign? Thank you, Robert. Obviously, the first thing to say is that we don't want to buy mm -hmm. with money anybody's votes. Or rice. We want to... <laughs> or rice, cups of rice, whatever it is, or stands, yeah. as the case may be. We'd like people to, to pay us with their trust and confidence in us. Um, and we're also going to, uh, you know, give a pledge mm -hmm. that we will fulfill all the promises that we've made as well. Now, this does cost money to run a campaign, That's especially true. if you're not in a formal political party framework. Mm -hmm. It does cost a lot of money because you need, first and foremost, to communicate what your message is. Mm -hmm. You need to reach people. You need to communicate and get their input, input mm -hmm. and build the connection that I spoke of right at the beginning. All of that costs money. Mm -hmm. And it requires people. It requires feet on the ground. It requires volunteers. It requires a graphic and design team. Mm -hmm. It requires us to put you know, um, adverts and advertorials. Um, in the media and so on. And so mm -hmm. it does cost money. What we've decided to do is we, we want this campaign to be, you know, funded autonomously as it were. You know, we okay. don't we don't want Western funds as they say. <laughs> you know, we want Zimbabwe uh, to make a pledge for their future and okay. contribute. And so far the response has been overwhelming. You know, okay. as you'll know from the political um candidate the campaign page yeah. mm -hmm. we've raised now close to nine thousand dollars our target is thirty thousand by the end of the campaign mm -hmm. and you'll find that people are very very generous um with their with their donations um in cash those are just in cash donations but yeah. we've got lots of other people who who could in cash or you know put a monetary value to mm -hmm. their contribution we've got lawyers who give off their Obviously, time who, who <laughs> we've got mm -hmm. you know we've got you know various partners that will offer us water for our community events. Mm. You know, we've got so much goodwill from the community, people who've wanted to, you know, spearhead projects, mm. you know, train train small businesses. So we've got a lot of um, in-kind support. But we definitely, definitely need more because, like I said, just the T-shirt budget mm. yes. is huge. And you need to get your, your um, memorabilia mm. for the campaign out there. We want to paint the entire constituency from Avondale to Strathaven to Cremona to Belgravia. Mm -hmm. The whole constituency, we want it to be yellow. And that definitely does cost money. So so um, the platform that we've got for people to donate is set up on our website. Okay. You can donate there. There's an eco If you platform. can name the website. The website is Fadzai with a Y for mm -hmm. MP.com. Okay. Yeah, that's there the you website. are. For, and also for those who want to be in the team to volunteer. To Absolutely. Do. So there's a sign up mm -hmm. button on the website where you can volunteer. And, you know, we need volunteers of all types. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to, going to go door to door into people's homes. You know, we're doing various community outreach programs on the 19th. We're actually going to be in Pomona. A couple of weeks ago, we're in Avondale. Um, we want to go everywhere. And we mm -hmm. need boots on the ground. We need young students. We need Anamama. We need Anamama. Okay. But we need everybody. We need you, Robert. <laughs> we need young people. I'm here. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> we doing need you. Now. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for your support. So we need everyone to come out because, you know, 
Zimbabwe is such mm. a diverse country. We want everybody to get involved. We don't want anybody to feel mm. excluded from, you know, participating. And sometimes when you get up there and you do something, you become part of the change we want. Because a lot of the problems we face as a country mm. are mindset problems. So once we adjust our mindset, we won't have to bother with cleanup campaigns because people will pick up their litter on their own. People will see that, look, the community hall needs to be painted. It needs a librarian. It needs a book drive. Whatever it is case may be. So once we get people, you know, infused with that community spirit, and you'll mm. see in our manifesto, there's a whole section on hope and service to the community. We want, you know, our community to solve some of its problems as well. Um, next year, um, the country is going for elections. The last one was in 2013. Correct. Would you say, if you look back within your constituents, something valuable has been done by the sitting MP? That's a great question, Robert, and I'll preface it by saying that mm. we're the full campaign. You know, we, we, we don't want to win our, our campaign by mm. throwing mud, mud okay. sling. Okay. That said, you know, I think <laughs> yeah. as a citizen, as a constituent, I'm entitled to say that I've had no interface with my member of parliament, and I don't think it should be that way. I don't know where I can contact him. I don't know where he is to be found. I don't Open know what it? projects he's... Done. Still, he's not okay. spoken to my issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I am aware. I did a bit of research concerning, you know, what you know some of the projects are because sometimes you know projects happen and you don't know about them. I found that there was a, a beauty pageant that he hosted. Um, that's as far as it goes. But beyond that, I haven't really seen mm -hmm. um, much development in the constituency. In fact, things are getting worse. I mean, there's obviously the service delivery. Mm. Um, problem, you know, whether it's waste management, yeah. whether it's, you know, all those sort of things, what I, I appreciate that the, that's the role of local government and council, but I do think as an MP in an urban constituency, you've got a responsibility to hold accountable mm -hmm. those councillors to ensure that they're doing their job and to see how we can improve, you know, the efficiency of council's operations. So, for example, people can separate their waste, you know, and we, we don't want a situation where we go for one month, council hasn't c collected the garbage. You go for 10 years, 15 years sometimes mm -hmm. in Gunhill and Avondale where people haven't had water and the MP is completely silent and you just, you know, say, you know, it's council's responsibility and you leave it. You have to step in at some point and insist on accountability. Um, as an MP, you have to see what the what the snags are, what the obstacles are in the law. Your mm -hmm. Urban Councils Act is very, very um, uh, detrimental to the functioning yeah. of council. It really ties mm -hmm. the hands of councillors. And so as an MP, I'd expect you to be lobbying for reform on that piece of legislation, and yet we, we simply don't see that. Okay. Um, ZANPF is a candidate, um, President Robert Mugabe. MTC coalition Morgan Shangrai, Dr. Gosana Moyo, then independent candidates. You are also an independent member of parliament. Who is your presidential candidate? Okay, so I think we need to get the facts straight a little bit. I think uh, Dr. Nkosana is not running as an independent. Hmm. He's running under a political outfit called um, Af 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 yeah, so that's there's, there's okay. difference between running under that sort of thing and running as an independent. Okay. Um, I'll tell you this, I'm definitely not going to vote or endorse the President Mugabe. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to vote Zanu PF. I definitely will vote on opposition lines. And I do think that, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, negotiation that's taking place. Okay. Um, I will definitely support unity. I do think that we should all rally behind one candidate and the mm -hmm. candidate that's um, winsome. I think it's our responsibility, um, you know, as citizens, those who are participating, to ensure that, you know, a united opposition voice, mm -hmm. opposition candidate um, is agreed upon. And once those agree, uh, those, you know, all of that is crystallized and it's come to a head, you know, I'll go for the, for the, for the united, agreed um, coalition head. Okay, yeah. let's just take a um, 15 minute break, then we'll be back. Yes to peace, yes to non-violent, 13 million voices for peace. This is busy signal. Whatever you do, doing it peacefully, doing it positively, that's the way. Busy signal yours truly. Ate! 13 million voices for peace. Zimbabwe, peaceful. Peace.
There you are. Our apologies. Um, as you know, in Zimbabwe, we always have internet challenges and it's one of those days again but as well Fadzi will be able to respond to some of the questions and comments that you sent on our uh, facebook platform she also do that via the same uh, comments she will, uh, if she have access to the internet then she will respond to those questions so keep them uh, coming in she is the aspiring member of parliament for mount pleasant uh, constituency so today we are also discussing about ye manifesto and she has also talked about the reason why she has decided to join the politics why she has chosen to contest uh, in mount pleasant not in any other because of the attachment she has with the constituents women has been marginalized and if you look at it there are a lot of women vendors i'm not sure about your constituents any problem okay. they're they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. okay what programs do you have to empower those women? That's great. Um, so, already on the June sets of the August, uh, mm. Robert, I'm pleased to report that we've got a small business training, okay. um, which is going to uh, involve, you know, a lot of women in order to, a lot of the, the, the residents of Mount Pleasant are, you know, working in homes, earning between $150 and $200. So what our small business training is called Shandrupo business okay. training, you know, be the change. And what it aims to do is to empower those women and men, you know, with skills that are going to help them to stretch that money and to run small businesses in a manner that's sustainable to stretch that income. For women as well, one of the big things that our community has raised is, like I said, the absence of a maternity clinic. When women have to give birth in Mount Pleasant constituency, they have to travel to either the Opperman Clinic in Bari, where they have to travel to Hatcliffe or Warren Park, because from our district clinic mm -hmm. from Mount Pleasant, okay. from our district, mm -hmm. because our district clinic doesn't have maternity facilities. So, oh. you know, that's something that would be incredibly empowering because the whole, you know, uh, cost of traveling to another constituency to that's travel true. all the way mm -hmm. to Mbari is it's extremely costly. Um, and so those are some of the things that we're, we're looking at um, to empower our women. Mm -hmm as we round off everyone is a background the name of money is associated with someone else Correct. so is my hair Correct. some are saying she is there to divide the vote in mount pleasant because of her father a senior civil servant a, a member of zanpf i don't know maybe they've seen him carrying the card or voting for <laughs> zanpf <laughs> yes yeah yeah yes and says this is um my area is there to divide the vote mm -hmm. so that the opposition gets fewer votes among themselves and give the seat and donate the seat to ZANU-PF. What's your comment on that? I think, I think that's a regrettable view mm -hmm. that's been taken, Robert. Obviously, I'm not ZANU-PF. I think I've spoken consistently yeah. against ZANU-PF. Mm -hmm. We have to be very true to the evidence yes. in my record. Yeah. And I don't think it's the case that when I started speaking out, when I did, I was like, oh, you know, my dad was like, hey, Fuzzy, yes. <laughs> go and do this. Yeah. And, you know, if anything, um, I I'm happy to say this, that, you know, the day I told my dad mm -hmm. and mom that I was running, like any parents, they were like, what the hell are you doing? It's yes, dangerous. That was going to be my next person. How, <laughs> How did the conversation go? Yes. Yeah. What yeah. the hell are you doing? What do you think we're going to do? And yeah. then it's, parents don't want you to be involved in this, you know. Mm -hmm said politics is dirty. He was and your father was right never a, into politics. He was never a politician. Mm. He's never run for elected office. Had you heard of him before you heard of me, Robert? Yeah, I think definitely. We need to be, yes. yeah. <laughs> we need to be honest mm. with ourselves. And so I think those those murmurings are deeply regrettable. They're mm. not factually accurate. Yeah. I'm my own woman. You spoke earlier about the empowerment of women. I think mm. it's it's very offensive to say to a young woman, you're doing everything you're doing and you're saying everything you're saying because your dad has sent you. Mm. As if I don't have any agency of my own. <laughs> oh, Robert, one thing about what we are eating is in the IT. No, that's what it does. That's exactly how it, how it goes. It's my future. You know, my parents, my parents' life is, you know, they're now in retirement. I am the one who's got a vested interest in the future. And so when I look at the country, and mind you, I'm a trained lawyer. Mm -hmm. So I look at the, the absence 
of you know constitutionalism I, I look at how the rule of law is taken for granted you know if you if you look at a lot of the work that I've done it's been around holding the government to account the course yeah. that I teach at the university it's called administrative law okay. it's a whole body of law devoted to holding the government to account so are you saying uh -huh. that uh, now sent, I got me, it. <laughs> <laughs> sent me to, to teach to that and it's all rigged <laughs> You yeah. know, and, and you know all the kids that I've taught know exactly mm -hmm. how I feel about that government. So I think you know let's let's not be lazy in our analysis as Zimbabweans. Mm -hmm. Let's not call what we don't understand or what's new or interesting CIO. That's very lazy. Mm -hmm. You know, let's analyze it. Let's go through the manifesto and say, you know what, Fuzzy, your manifesto doesn't make sense. True. Well, let's say Fuzzy. I disagree with you, mm -hmm. but don't bring my father into it because mm -hmm. I'm my own woman and I've because got you've my own Also, agency. you've got your father somewhere. What about my mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. about my mother? Are you saying that she doesn't yeah. have any sort of an yes. impact? Mm -hmm. And because your father worked in government, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't mean that he then controls every single thing that you do. Like I said, you know, he'd much rather I just lived my dainty life. Um, these things aren't... Uh, politics isn't always fun it's not always easy mm -hmm. and you know if you're a parent you know you'd much rather your child stays safely in her chambers mm -hmm. goes to court you know wears her stilettos doesn't do all these things put herself <laughs> out there you know so it's, it's it comes at huge cost and it's a cost that i've personally decided to bear it's got nothing to do do with my father i'm sure he respects um, decision. my decision and mm -hmm. you know we go from there so let's not mudsling let's sling on the issues that's why I'm running remember to, to ensure that the issues mm -hmm. remain at the forefront you know when you now go for someone's personality and their heritage you know we then start to to do mm -hmm. all sorts of things that are, are wrong right now a member of the coalition is like Deepam Tambara mm -hmm. it's not that his father was done with he himself <laughs> was done with PF. he was he's a retired army general yeah. he was slap bang in there <laughs> Do you get what I mean? So yeah, let's true, let's yeah. just let's mm -hmm. be rational in our analysis about these things. Let's be factual mm -hmm. and let's deal with the issues. Let's not see ghosts where there where there are no ghosts. Yeah, we're not ghost. asked to divide the vote. Mm -hmm. We want to win the vote. And That's the fact true. that we're running against a ZANU PF politician speaks volume. You know, it's that not as though we want to wrestle the the parliamentary seat for the opposition, but we're saying, you know what, this is a vote that belongs to the opposition it doesn't belong to zanu pf so we're going to take active steps to ensure that the constituency comes back to the people i'm one person who is always on social media because i believe in it and that's why i am even here how do you handle hate comments from <laughs> the people you know robert yeah you know like i said to you does it mean good to be good or not? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, we have to ignore those. And, you know, thank God, you know, one of my strongest qualities that I don't break. So if you mm -hmm. write hateful things about me, I'll, I'll simply disregard them because they don't, they don't count in the grand scheme of things. If you write lies mm -hmm. about me, I'll simply disregard God them. You know, there was a, an account last week that was drawn to my attention which said, oh, there's a sex tape. You ignore that. Yeah, because I, actually, when I went to, to, to Facebook, it says, yeah. if you want it, Inbox, inbox, inbox me. Inbox me. me. That's the thing. You, you ignore all that. And it's even illegal to of keep course. that in your phone or in your home. <laughs> Someone is displaying that. that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think, you know, what I have to say is what I've said consistently to people who mm -hmm. ask me is that you have to disregard the hate. Obviously, you know, with the political territory mm -hmm. comes all sorts of scrutiny. Scrutiny is great, it's healthy because it takes us forward. If you ask me the tough questions, I should answer, mm -hmm. you know, but hate is just not useful to anyone. So yeah. I don't... It's an emotional to torture, that, actually. It tortures yourself, you know, not someone. Well, yeah. I don't get tortured by it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a lot stronger than yeah. that. Um, and, you know, those who hate should be put on notice that, you know, it literally is water off a duck's back. I don't bother about that at all because we've got very important work to do. To do. And that's the mm -hmm. work of serving our community. And that's what I'd rather focus on, you know. And so the hate comments I'll disregard. The constructive criticism I'll fully entertain because I'm young and I'm growing and I'm my growth game is strong. And you mm -hmm. only grow when you've got an open heart and an open mind to learn. So I'm, you know, very open to, to criticism. The hate, I simply ignore. Mm -hmm. Your last message 
to the people of Mount Pleasant constituents that are watching right now that you want to come to the ballot box and put an X in Father in my head. Thank you very much, Robert. Um, what I'll say to, to the constituents of Mount Pleasant is please vote for the change candidate. You know, the responsibility upon us as Zimbabweans now, um, 2017, 2018, is to be the change we wish to see in our communities. If we, you know, relinquish the responsibility of taking care of the country, we're going to wake up one day in the next five years, the next 10 years, and there'll be nothing left. If the potholes that we have are as bad as they are now, you know, what more in the next 10 years? So please, let's get involved. Apathy is not our friend and is the strongest rigging tool. So please ensure that you register to vote, ensure that you do vote, ensure that you defend your vote, and ensure that you come forward, speak out, get involved in your community, don't just get into your car, go to work and come back home, but get involved because all we want at the end of the day is a better life for ourselves, a better life for our children and ultimately a better life for mm. our children's children. You know, the problem with Zimbabwe sometimes, <coughs> Robert, is that we're very short term in our thinking. We want to start taking a long term view um, to our living and start making decisions that are going to positively affect, you know, generations that are going to come after us and that starts with good governance it starts with you know a heart for development a heart for progress you know where we don't champion hate but we mm -hmm. champion you know unity of That's purpose true. and you know mm -hmm. a real desire to achieve some sort of positive change for the constituency first or 210 constituencies and ultimately the country i hope um as we come to the end of the program fadzi may have one one or two from this uh, program and she says one of the things i have been repeatedly accused of is being idealistic you have heard it she was in the studio first thank you so much thank robert you, thank you so all much the best your in 2018 so all the best with your, with your work and keep doing the great work that you're doing thank anytime you, you come here zimdi tv building bridges. Thank you so we much. We give voice to the voiceless. Thank you so much. In our and day, please no one not. Thank you so much. <laughs> we have uh, been talking to Fadzai Maheri, an independent uh, member, aspiring uh, member of parliament for Mount Pleasant constituents. I hope uh, before the elections, she will come back again. I hope and pray that one day we will have all the people that will be contesting in Mount Pleasant here in studio so that we have a debate and you have an opportunity to listen and choose who you want to. But for now, we had Fadzai Maere. To the team, Suvisa Tapmane, Ivan Stavaguta and Julius Patson, thank you. Join us tomorrow for another program. Bye-bye. Yes to peace, yes to non-violent, 13 million voices for peace, this is busy signal, whatever you do, doing it peacefully, doing it positively, that's the way, busy signal yours truly, at it, 13 million voices for peace, Zimbabwe, peaceful, peace. This live cast has been powered by Zim DITV News, a division of Sly Media Productions, specialists in social media streaming and in-house TV productions.